we're in the shop here at Metal Tech 4x4. Uh, today we've got a Lexus uh, GX470 here in the shop that uh, quite a while ago we went ahead and, and we installed an Icon Stage 2 suspension on it. Uh, did a full overland build of armor, uh, rear bumper, stage three rear bumper, stage three front bumper, sliders, the works. And over the last several months, uh, the customer's been finding since he's added a drawer system and added like refrigerator, um, when he does the full loadout for going overlanding, the back of the truck is starting to sag down a little bit with weight. And that's not uncommon. I mean, it's very common as we build our vehicles, we keep adding more and more to it. And then it starts affecting us, starts loading things down. So it's just a simple situation of the springs. We need to put a higher rate of spring on the truck. And so this has an Icon, basic standard Icon one and a half inch lift rear spring. And we're gonna be pulling that out and we're gonna be putting the Icon three inch overland spring in the rear. And that's gonna bring the back of the truck up by about one inch. And it's gonna give him that capacity for when he has all that weight in there for overlanding. So what we're gonna be doing is just installing springs on this truck. and so. First thing we're gonna be doing is pulling the tires and wheels off the truck. Uh, once those are off, we'll lift the truck in the air, and then we'll go ahead and start the process of what it takes to just, just change the springs. Here we go. We're inside the wheel well of the GX470, and all we want to do is change the spring out. Well, we're, we're not doing anything else, just changing the spring. So to get the spring out, we got to basically lose, take the disconnect the shock from the truck, and we have to disconnect the sway bar from the truck. So anytime that you're doing shocks on the back of a Prada 120 or 150, the lower mount is the biggest pain in the rear end to work with. So we want to leave that one on, and we're just going to take the top off up above. And so this is where we're going to be disconnecting it up here. And then the sway bar itself, we're going to disconnect it right here. So right now it's stretched out. We're going to go ahead and drop this down a little bit. Um, I may bring some uh, screw jacks over and lift this up a little bit to give it some support. But right now I can go ahead and start releasing these bolts. I'm just going to do the top of the shock, and I'm going to be doing the sway bar here. Um, the sway bar is a 12 millimeter nut. This is an Icon IF or IFP uh, VS series shock. Uh, this is the two VF2s, the, the two inch diameter. Um, and the nut that they come with is a 19 millimeter nut. The factory may be a little different, but in this particular case, I know it's a 19 and I got a 12. So I'm gonna be using a 12 millimeter gear wrench to uh, take this off. Nuts off. Rubber bushing and the top hat for the rubber bushing. Remember the sequence that they go in. That's the sequence when you put them back on again. Now we're gonna take the uh, top of this nut off. And uh, you know, it's great to see this truck is being used. It's actually getting out on the trail. We got nice chunks of dirt that we're getting to work with, but that's okay. It's, I, I'm happy to see the truck being actually used. So we're gonna come in here and take this upper. All right, so it's rotating on us. See that? This top body is gonna move back and forth. So we need to keep this from moving. So we're gonna come in here and take advantage of the wrench flats that Icon put on here. Now let's say you don't have that. Maybe it's a, um, Maybe you're putting, a, maybe you have a factory shock on here. Um, you can come in with a pair of vice grips and put a, grab hold of the top part of the shaft of the shock and keep it from moving. And that part of the shaft will never go inside this past the oil seal. So you're not gonna hurt things if you did it that way. But since this is an Icon shock, it actually has those wrench flats in it. They actually put those in so they can assemble this hat, this top piece onto the body. But we're gonna take advantage of that for being able to undo this. So let me go grab the wrench that's for that. I think that slot on top of the uh, icon set is an inch and three eighths. I have an inch and a quarter, and I got an inch and a half, but I don't have an inch and three eighths wrench for that. So we're gonna go to the next best thing, 
gigantic channel locks, put a rag on it, protect it, and uh, we'll just keep going. Pushing, washer, frame, nut. That side goes on. All right, so this side is now loose. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and repeat it on the other side, do the exact same thing. All right, so now we're gonna be pulling, now that both sides are loose, we got them loose. The other side completely dropped free. The side that has the panard bar does not drop free very easily. In fact, the side that has the panner bar is kind of hard to push down. Now, you're doing this by yourself. A lot of us are doing it by ourselves. We don't always have extra people around to help us. So we're looking for ways to make it a little easier for one person to do this. And one of the biggest challenges is getting primarily the driver's side spring out. Uh, you gotta be able to get it off its perch, away from its upper mount. And it's just sitting in here. It's, it should be, it's loose, really. Um, so what I'm gonna be doing is I'm kind of cheating a little bit and I'm using a small bottle jack that I'm putting on top of the axle housing and it's going up to the frame and then I'm going to just lift this up into position and I'm going to take advantage of the hydraulic power of the jack to push the axle down and away from the frame. That's going to allow the spring to come give me enough room to be able to pull the spring out. Now I'm being very careful how my jack is sitting. I'm being very careful with this at, safety eyes on, gloves on. Uh, obviously my truck, this truck is sitting in the air right now. Um, but I'm gonna be bringing this jack to push the axle away, which is allowing me then to get to this spring that's now getting loose in its perch and it's now getting to where I can pull it out and put in the, uh, the overland spring that's gonna go into its place. Now the spring that's going in, I know, is a big spring. It is a really long spring, and we'll put them side by side here in a minute on the floor so you can see what they look like. So I'm giving myself a nice amount of room. I'm being very careful right now that I've got everything set where it needs to be. I'm good to go, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out and uh, grab the other spring. And while I'm working in this area, I'm being very cautious that I'm not grabbing any of the the ABS lines are hooking any of the lines. This is the ABS sensor line right here. We don't want to be hooking onto this thing. This is a really thin rubber housing. It has a very small wire inside of it. It's very easy to pull these, break the wire, but not know that it's broken because the housing stays in one place. So now I have the Icon Stage 1 spring out. The isolator, which is sitting on top, just comes off. We're going to reuse the isolator, but that's the spring. So let's do a side by side of this with the, uh, with the overland springs. Okay, so we just got our spring out. I'm gonna go ahead and carefully uh, let our hydraulic jack release pressure. And I'm gonna move over to the other side and pull the other spring out. All right, I'm on the other side now. This is the passenger side. Because the panhard bar is not on this side, this side actually has a lot of movement in it. So I can probably get this one out without having to use the, the bottle jack. Yeah, it doesn't want to go, so I'm going to throw the bottle jack up there. Again, I'm being very careful that my bottle jack is stabilized, everything's in good positions. I'm gonna go ahead and release the bottle jack on this side again, on this side, and we'll go back over to the other side of the truck. I'll put some bottle jack pressure on it, and then I'll get that big spring put on that side.
All right, so this takes going, but you'll eventually get it to where it can go up and go on, like right there. So put the spring in its proper seat. That looks good. Release the pressure. There we go. So if I didn't have the other spring out of the other side, this would be almost so difficult to do that it would have been easier to, to release the bolt uh, on the lower link. That's the other technique to do. If you don't have a bottle jack, you can actually just take the lower bolt out of the lower link and that'll allow the rear, axle, the rear axle to drop down further. But in this particular case on the truck, I've done this enough that I know that it's gonna work with the bottle jack trick uh, for putting the oversized spring in. You mainly, you really need it for when you're doing this large of an aftermarket oversized spring. That's, you know, this is an Icon um, overlanding spring. So it's a, it's a big spring. It's, it's a uh, three inch overall spring. So it's pretty tall. So, all right, we're just gonna go do the other side. Back over on the uh, passenger side, um, I'm using the jack. Now I got the spring on the driver's side, which is the hardest one to get in. So always do the driver's side first. Always do the driver's side first. That's the hardest one. The passenger side is by far the easiest. So do the hardest one first, and then it, do the second. I mean, if you put the driver, the passenger side on first, you're gonna fight the driver's side like crazy. So driver's side first, then do passenger side. And I'm using the little bottle jack. I'm just bringing this down to give me that extra room to be able to fit that really large spring in there. All right, so that's where it needs to be. I'm gonna go ahead and release the pressure and bring the suspension back up. So the hardest part's done at this point. Now we move on to the easier part, which is put the shocks back on and the sway bar. We're gonna put the shocks and the uh, sway bar back on again. And when you are doing the shocks, the lower mount, it's gotta slide onto the lower mount and the lower mount's angled downward. But the shock itself is gonna be upward. And on shocks that have rubber bushings or polyurethane bushings at the bottom, that's a lot of torque to try to twist. And so if you bolt the shock on first on the top of the frame, it's almost impossible to get the shock on down below. So you always wanna put the shock on below. Now in this case, we're just changing out the spring so we didn't undo the shock at the axle and did it up at the top of the frame. So now all I have to do is just guide that shock back into the top of the frame. Now the shock right now is angling forward. I gotta bring the shock back and then push up on the axle to get it to go back through the frame. So we're gonna do that now. So there's the shock mount, lower shock mount, causing the, the shock to wanna to lean forward. So we don't take this off, we leave this on. And now the shock is leaning forward and I need to just push the shock back and hold it there and then push that and then bring the axle up and put that through the hole of the frame. So the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna lift the back axle up. And again, I'm working on a lift. For most people at home, you're gonna be doing this on, on a driveway or a garage floor and you just use jack stands and use a floor jack. It's very easy or the bottle jack like I was just using to use the to the other part. But um, I'm gonna use a screw jack to lift this up. It's gonna bring the axle up and allow me to guide the uh, shock through the through the center hole. Now I'm going to purposely lift this up a little bit so the shock is kind of bound up there at first, which is perfectly fine, because um, then I can pull down on the shock and move it to the hole and it'll pop right through. So I'm going to go ahead and lift the axle up now. And as we do this, we'll watch up here. See how that's going up? It's just pushing in the front part of the pocket on the frame. That's fine. It's not hurting anything. So now that's now I'm pushing up on the axle still. Now the shock is actually collapsing a little bit as I do this. That's again, perfectly fine. It's not hurting anything. There's a shock's designed to collapse. That's what shocks do. So I'm gonna get it to a certain point. That's probably enough. Now I'm gonna be able to grab the shock. I'm gonna pull down the shock. So it's still a shock. I can pull down on it, bring it over and then let it go through the hole. So if I can do that, or you can see it. There. So now it's through the hole. So now at this point, our sway bar won't even reach. Can't get there. So we definitely got to bring the axle up in order to accommodate this. So I'm going to continue doing this. So what I'm looking for is the shock to be seated in its hole entirely. And the shock bushings have a large hole that's designed to fit through that upper part of the frame. And so we're kind of at that point. 
But I need to go up higher because my sway bar, oh, okay, there it goes. Sway bar just went through. So now I can put the sway bar on. So at this point, I'm good to go. I can go ahead and put my nuts back on this thing. So I'm gonna put the shock nut on first. So it's gonna go bushing, then washer. The bushing's thicker than the area there. So I need to pull the, pull the shock down. Again, which we can do. There we go. So now I can put the shock back through the hole. There we go. There it is. You want to know right where the thread of the nut engages on the thread of the stud. So I'm going to check this before I even put the washer on. Threads engage right there. So if I drop it straight down and start turning it, start turning it, that's where it's going to engage. So I'm going to pull that out. I'm going to hold it right where I know the timing is. I'm going to put the washer up there. Now you can put the nut up there and I know exactly where the threads are going to engage. There we go. The nut is on. All right, so now I can put the uh, sway bar back on, which is going to go lower washer, uh, upper bushing, upper washer, and then the little lock nut. It's just a 12 millimeter lock nut. Excuse me, well it's a 12 millimeter hex, the, nut, the bolt itself is probably about eight millimeter. That's good. So I'm gonna to start to snug that down just a little bit so it's got more than a few threads on it. I'm not gonna completely snug it because I wanna be able to have some room to move around. And then the same thing goes for big old 19 up here. All right, so this side's good. So it's not tight, but I've got it snugged up enough that I can go ahead and take the pressure off the screw jack and lower this side of the axle down. Then I can go over and do the driver's side, which is the last side to do. And once I do that side, then I'll be able to come back over here and torque uh, those nuts down further. Okay, so now I'm going to start raising the axle up in the back using the screw jack. Again, at home, use a floor jack. Um, I'm making sure that this is sitting, not facing flop down or anything like that. This is sitting in the up position, so it's going to go towards its hole. And this is sitting close to the hole. It's starting to touch a little bit there because just the side of, of that side getting put in, it helped push this up. So I'm going to go ahead and start raising the axle. I'm going to put pressure on this, and it's the same thing as the other side. We're just going to repeat it. There we go. Okay, bushing's where it needs to be. Now I'm going to go ahead and keep raising the axle up. Bushing's through. Upper sway bar part is good. I'm gonna go ahead and put the sway bar upper bushing on. So we have washer, bushing, lower washer, frame mount, bushing, and then top washer, top washer, like that, like a little hat. And then the nut goes on top. Now I can put the washer and the nut on this side. And again, I'm gonna check and see where the uh, threads start on this side, just so I know where they're at. So this turns that way. As soon as that turns that way, it engages the thread. So I'm gonna keep that location. I'm gonna put the nut of the washer. Again, it's a little hat. And I'm gonna bring this back up there. Put that on spot. I'm gonna start turning it and it's gonna start engaging right away. And it just engaged. So the thread, the nut, or the, the nut is threaded onto the stud now. Now at this point, we can go ahead and snug the whole thing down because then we're going to go over to the other side, snug that side down, and then we're done. All right, so we just finished everything. We got the uh, shocks back on, connected to the frame. We got the sway bar connected back to the frame. I retorqued down the passenger side. The driver's side is completely done. And I have verified that the pigtail of the springs are sitting in the proper pigtail seats. Springs are sitting in the proper seats up above. 
And we have the upper isolators or secondary springs as Toyota calls them, these cone things in the top. Those are in place and fully operational. So we're good to go at this point. Um, I see that the ABS lines are all looking nice and healthy. Uh, I'm gonna make a recommendation to this customer that uh, extended brake lines would be a good idea uh, to put on this truck. Uh, the rear brake lines are looking a little little stretched out. We're at full droop. They're they're okay right now. I mean, it's it's all right, but over time, it's probably a good idea. Um, not probably, it is a good idea to, to change those out. But for right now, we're good. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and lower the truck down and put the tires and wheels back on and then torque the wheels uh, 100, right, right at 100 foot pounds. Uh, factory, I believe it was like 90, right around 90 something rather. Um, all the aftermarket wheel guys always say go right to about 100, 110. So we're gonna go 100 on it and um, have it ready to hand off back to the customer. So we're torquing the wheels. Last thing you always do, anytime you have tires off your truck, always torque, always torque, always torque. Don't trust just your, your uh, oh, I just tighten them up and they're out there tight and they're gonna work just fine. Don't trust that. You wanna always get the torque wrench out. Um, half inch torque wrench, don't have to spend a ton of money on them, but you want a decent one. Um, you know, the Craftsman ones are actually really decent. You get them at Lowe's. Um, uh, yeah, so you just want to make sure that you're torquing your, torquing your wheels anytime you have them off your truck, put them back on again. It's just not worth risking having lug nuts come loose and all the damage it's going to do to your rim. Uh, even if the tire doesn't leave the truck, you're just going to have all kinds of damage done to your rim and to your hub uh, and your studs and everything. Of course, wheel bearing probably. You just don't want to mess with it. Um, you know, years ago, uh, my uh, uh, FJ80 um, had a had an employee that wanted to use it and go wheeling in it. And I said, sure, not a problem, but you need to do some, do some, a couple, a couple of things that need to be done to the truck. So he did the, he did the work on the truck, had the tires off, put them back on again, and he just torqued them down with the impact gun. He didn't get the wrench out. And he was driving in town and he watched a 37 inch tire in a beadlock pass him at an intersection before he realized it was his tire on the truck. And of course it fell down onto the rotor and it uh, wasn't a good thing. Uh, fortunately, nobody got hurt. And in the end it was okay, but, um, just not worth it. So just always torque your wheels. Just use a torque wrench, torque them. We're going 100 foot pounds, and uh, it's a nice number for for the for most of the aftermarket rims that are out there. So uh, we'll do the other side. Truck's done.